Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome to episode 60 of the Mind Heist podcast. SubhanAllah. Big 6 0. 60 and handed in there. So we're past the 52 mark, which is like one a, one a week, right, for a year. So yeah. uh, now there's nothing is significant until we reach 100. <laughs> yeah, pretty and, much. Uh, yeah, man. Anyway, every episode, inshallah, is significant, right? Um, we're just uh, recording. It, you know what? This is inshallah. I'll I'll push this out by Monday, so it still will be a Monday upload. So we're still kind of staying on track. Alhamdulillah. Um, and uh, I think I think we've we started getting a bit of an increase in feedback and and people contacting us, right? So that's pretty good, man. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Like people asking emails. And last episode we did a whole pretty much a whole episode just dealing with one question, and it really it really um spurred on some good conversation so mm. that was good handle i can hear the seagulls in the background mashallah. i was wondering i looked i was looking at my track and i was like what is that noise that keeps buffering mm-hmm. on my track and i realized there's a seagull behind me <laughs> in the window monster seagull yeah <laughs> yeah do you think maybe seagulls will eventually like reach the size of like a i don't know like a big dog probably that down was, here bro they're, that'll be they're... scary man they eat everything down here. I've seen them eating like pigeons, bro. Yeah, yeah. Eating Ooh. pigeons, Allah. Akbar. Yes, bro. I saw this very funny video. <laughs> it was a, it was a pelican eating a pigeon. I'm, I'm sure many people oh, saw okay. that. It went, it went viral. It's like yeah. this pigeons like trying to get out of its big mouth. <laughs> oh man, it was mad. Oh. <laughs> it was mad. Okay, so jumping straight into this excellent, interesting question we got. Is there anything to say before we go into this? Um, just that I want to apologise if my audio is all over the place because I'm not at home. I'm recording at mm. my mum's house. Inshallah, I'll and, put um, some extra effort into getting the volume correct this time. Yeah, I think we've we've historically I've had on my end I've had bad audio, but mm. like when I look at the levels now, they're quite mm. high. And then yeah, yeah. Later I think on, it's, it's it not goes low, down. bro. You're not quiet. It's just relative to me. You're quiet. And so uh, people don't want it full volume because I'm too loud, uh, but then you'll be too quiet, etc. Something like that. Anyway, so inshallah khair. So, okay, so I'll just read the question out, inshallah. So um, Sumaya sent us an email. She said, um, uh, this is regarding episode 59, the last episode. Really enjoyed your previous episode, and I appreciate how you both stick to your guns when it comes to the choices you make for your families. What I want to ask is, in an ideal world or ideal modern Muslim community, although a wife being at home is the best place, if that was the case for all Muslim women, how would we have sister circles or or women teaching Islam slash Quran slash Arabic to other women or having Muslim female doctors, etc., which would which would mean it is a form of labor. And although it's ideal for you personally to not want your wife to work, and that is your right, what you, uh, would you say this has to be the guest, the, would you say this has to be the case for all Muslim women? If this was the case, Muslim women would probably not access certain resources that are easily available to Muslim men from the things I've listed. I'm not saying this is to attack either of you brothers, just wanted to have your opinion on how we would be in an ideal Muslim society without Muslim women contributing to the workforce in some way. And this doesn't necessarily mean mixed environments where we talk about medical or Islamic institutions. Because surely you both would prefer your wives to be in a female-only spaces when it comes to learning about the deen or befriending like-minded Muslim women slash reverts, accessing a safe space or Islamic schools or being treated by a female doctor, even preferably a Muslim female doctor, etc. I just realized these sentences are so long and that's why I'm struggling. <laughs> yeah. Um, as we know, Aisha was an amazing scholar and whilst she never neglected her duties towards the Prophet ﷺ, she was a teacher, just not salaried in the modern way we do now. In my personal opinion, it would be a positive way to have financial stability but also fulfill an Islamic duty even as a wife. However, I would like to know what your opinion is based on that of course. Also, one minor criticism, your audio is low, blah blah blah, may Allah bless your uh, both your families. Okay, very good. Jazakiyallahu khairan. So, blah, blah, blah. 
No, I just blah blah the volume thing because we already discussed that. So <laughs> there's a lot going on here, you know. Like I said, bro, before we recorded, maybe we could cover, uh, we could break it down, and that way we'll cover all these things in in a little bit of detail. So, um, hmm, where should we begin? So, I think we could make this episode actually about the ideal situation for maybe uh, ideal society. What would be Yanni, the place of women, maybe in more public facing kind of things? Uh, just yeah. in our opinion, of course, and. Um, before we begin, I just wanted to say, uh, what was it I wanted to say? No, I don't, I don't remember now. So, yeah. So, yeah. Um, I think, bro, firstly, would you say that what she's saying is you don't want your wife to work? She's saying that to both of us. Is that even true? Um, I think there's, there's a couple of things here. Okay. There's one that, negates the autonomy of a woman in the sense that it negates the fact that maybe the woman is the one that doesn't want to work like so the whole wife working thing mm. for me I, w I when I got married it didn't really like I got married and my wife was already sort of working mm. right and then it wasn't until she had to leave London so she had to leave her job there mm. and came down to Brighton and then we sort of slowed down the whole thing about looking for another job mm. like it wasn't we weren't in a rush but then i can't remember if it wasn't before or after we had my boy that she got the job anyway she was working a, a bit here and then when she had sorry man that's when she decided that she didn't want to right mm. okay yeah. so on in that and then and then i and then i valued having her at home more because i mm. understood the significance of it so in, in that aspect yeah, the, it's a woman who decided that she didn't want to work, right? Mm, yeah. The second thing is that this notion of ideal Muslim society, it means ideal as a whole thing, a holistic. If you're talking ideal, you're talking holistically, the whole society is ideal. Yeah. It's not, uh, we've got aspects of Islam and then the woman doesn't want, woman wouldn't work, etc. If you had an ideal Muslim society, then you could have, literally anything idealistically speaking you could have a hospital just for females you could have universities just for females do you understand what i'm trying to mm. to say here like mm. the facilitation of of women in the workforce and in education and in all these aspects that uh, they want to exceed in mm. that some women want to exceed in then that can be facilitated in a way that doesn't uh doesn't cause any issues that it would do as we currently are now. Well, that assumes, though, that the only problem with, the only potential issue with, the, you know, women working is that they're mixing with men. It is one of the major issues. Mm. It is one of the major issues. I think what we're, from at least my point of view, yeah. there's a big distinction between an unmarried woman, uh, so a single woman who is, you know, obviously doesn't have kids, etc. And there isn't, Oh god, my son's crying. There isn't much in the way of of sort of serving anybody mm. or serving any family because mm. you haven't got one yet. And then the, the distinction between that and the distinction between, you know, a married woman or maybe with kids, etc. So this is where I don't know about yourself, so I'd like to hear like your part of it. If you've got let's if we hypothetically think about a woman that isn't married, yeah, doesn't have kids, yeah. Where the where did you know where would you put them in your not that you have a say in what they do yeah, yeah. because you're not their husband or anything but yeah. where would you envision that they should be sort of mm. thing in society uh, yeah before i answer that i just remembered what i wanted to say initially which is that this is i think uh this is an important thing right that i'm realizing is that um a lot of times i think you know to yanni yeah, but perhaps correctly there's been criticism of always men talk about what women should be doing right which has its place of course the prophet was a man and you know uh you could say men are leading society in many ways and so that's normal i'm not fully on the whole thing of man has no right to talk about woman's place but i think from a point of view of um women actually taking the message and understanding it and being open to listening it's much better when the woman is asking for the man's opinion such as in this case right so like what did we do we like we just did a podcast uh maybe you know people thought oh these guys have interesting opinions and now they're asking for our opinion on the role of a woman 
right? And that's like a really good position to be in where people actually want to know what you've got to say. It's not like you're telling them what to do. They're asking you, what should we do perhaps, you know? So that's an interesting dynamic, which uh, that would be great if that was like more commonplace, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So um, there's so many ways to approach this, right? But I, I did a video a few months ago or maybe over a year ago now, and it was like, talking about uh this kind of issue right this kind of uh, topic of of women working and i just feel like um time is so precious um there's so much you should be there's so much to do right in terms of useful beneficial things for your akhirah and you know when you're trying to when your focus and your priority is the akhirah then obviously that's going to tie into benefiting society and benefiting the world and all of that right yeah so i think i'm very against the idea that which unfortunately is very common like um if if someone's not working especially a woman is not working they're useless to society they're wasting their time they're wasting their education i'm fully against that you know that's what i talked about in that video and i think in the last episode as well um so i don't like that um what i do like is women just using their time to do useful things for the akhirah and for society and I think a lot of the time that can be done without a job, you know, and I think some things. So, for example, yeah, uh, I, I in the video, I said, what if a woman could, you know, uh, OK, very good example. A lot of organizations, let's say Dawa organizations, charity organizations, let's say, you know, we need more Muslim media. And so you need organization for that. Yeah. A lot of the right. time, the restrictions of doing that to the highest level is money. Yeah, like, OK, if I'm going to give this like 40 hours a week, uh, you know, as a man, I need to earn money for that time because otherwise, how am I going to live? Right. But what if right. that requirement was gone? Yeah. So what if okay. what if, uh, you know, you already had your finances sorted right from your husband and now you don't need to, to get paid for it. And now money's not an issue anymore. You're just put, mm. purely putting your time for the sake of Allah. So. I that's what I like lean towards I think that's a pretty good model where it's like okay the men are going out there uh, to earn the money and then the women are free to do things that uh, because they don't require they're not required to earn money they're free to do things without needing to make money from it and that kind of opens up a lot of possibilities that's what I'm trying to say yeah so mm. even to the level of like I said, like making it some kind of organization, media, charity, whatever. What if you could do that without needing money? I think a lot of the a lot of the barriers to entry all of a sudden go down because now money's not needed as much. Like you still need money for certain things, but in terms of the most expensive thing is people's time. You know, that's pretty interesting. And it's also the maybe the purest form of intention, if you like. And if you ask a lot of people, especially initially when they started uh, any organization, they always wanted to do it without money being involved. But then they just realized the reality is if I'm going to give this a lot of time and I'm going to do my best on it, give my best energy in the day towards this, I need to earn a living. But that's yeah. only men. So what if women didn't need to? So um, in summary, I would say um, I would say that you know, everyone should be contributing to their akhara and, you know, serving society. Uh, as for a man, he must provide for his family. He must work, right? And that's why that's assumed in my mindset. It's assumed the man's going to be spending a lot of his time doing that. Whereas I don't assume that for the woman. And so I feel like the woman has that freedom, huge amount of freedom, inshallah, to go out and, and do interesting things where money is not required. So, yeah. Mm. I, it's really a difficult one to apply to in in general speech because so many situations are different I suppose like I'm yeah. I'm here sitting trying to think of women that don't necessarily have male leaders in their household yeah you know um maybe because that's what I am surrounded with a lot hmm for example, like my sisters and my my mom. At the moment, my dad lives abroad, so it's very yeah. difficult to put them in that category yes. when these being so separated. Because I, yeah. although I'm I'm doing it, although I can do it now for my my wife and my sort of immediate family, whatever you want to call it, 
I can't do, I can't also provide for them as well because they live in a separate household. But then again, one could argue, well, then you should work harder so you could, you know. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. But, but I'm trying to think like realistically right now, what would I do? Yeah. Um, but I once guess this again, is why, like what you're talking about, the ideal thing, uh, like if you're yeah. about the ideal Muslim society, that's what I was talking about. Like ideally, I think I can, I can, I can kind of imagine this world where like, Muslim women are like doing the whole society stuff. You know what I mean? Like the stuff where it's like just purely helping society uh, and filling in these gaps that, you know, the men can't fill if you like. And in an ideal society, like those women w would be taken care of financially, like 90% of them, you know, and maybe never it would be 100%. But yeah. Yeah, this is it. Like we can't have a halfway idea about ideal we need to mm. either go full ideal or <laughs> yeah, true, we're always true. stuck where we are now because we are doing ideals now. Mm. You know, there are elements of idealism in our lives now, but if you want to go a hundred percent, then we can go a hundred percent. Yeah. You know, and it goes back to what I said earlier, like we can facilitate the whole of society so that it's shaped around this model mm. of men working and, and women yeah, being yeah. free and available to do the things that are more meaningful, you mm. know? Um, but that doesn't that doesn't sort of answer the question of women wanting to do things and i think that's up to them because uh, at the end of the day i don't think you're ever going to get a society you know about how idealistic it is in terms of system yeah. systematically like everything could be in place people are always going to want certain things um, yeah. and you know and, and no doubt there's there's women right now that are going to want to have careers and women that are going to want to be uh, earning more than on mm. than their husband or their future husband or whatever, and and ca carry on these goals and aspirations that they've got. Um, one interesting one, and, and and the question I asked this regarding like being a doctor and stuff. Yeah, there is a need for female doctors and female midwives and yeah. things like this. And that that doesn't mean that that's the only thing that there's a need for. I'm sure there's a need mm. for many things in the female yeah, sector. Yeah. Um, this is why the only thing I can think of is that the best outcome is to have it facilitated so the pathway to that is facilitated mm. um for the better for the for the best interest of a woman mm. um but uh, let's put let's put a spin on it does that mean that as a married man and your wife wants to be a doctor mm. or you've married someone who's, who's studying to be a doctor then what, what do you do then do you put a stop to it together like let's say hypothetically you're both in agreement would mm. you feel okay though putting a stop to that that sort of path yeah well, that's why know. it's very essential to discuss it initially in the first place mm. you know and mm. i think uh, as a little bit of a side point i think uh something i've kind of heard of or observed is people meeting potential you know wife or husband and not being upfront and direct about certain things uh, maybe out of fear of rejection yeah so uh a man you know he meets a woman you know maybe woman from the uk who has certain you know let's be real you know she's be, been influenced to think a certain way and uh he deep down maybe what he's used to and just what he wants is he wants a woman that doesn't work and the the, right. the, the woman he meets she shows clear signs that she kind of she currently works or she wants to work she sees herself as working full time uh maybe until she has kids or whatever and he never makes it absolutely clear that he's not think you know he's that's not how he views having a family right and then yeah. they might get married maybe they get on in every other way they get married and this has not been brought up in a direct way and i think is often down more down to the man to just be straight up up front about it like come on like be a man basically like who cares if you get rejected because of that like it, yeah. you're saving yourself long term you know so uh people have to be direct about what they're comfortable with what they're not comfortable with you know and yeah so that's a big factor uh in terms of uh compatibility and i think bro uh, addressing the question of having women do certain jobs where women are best suited for that job and m women are needed for that job like uh you know, gynecologist, for example, I think uh, in an ideal Muslim society where there isn't this pressure to work, um, there isn't this valuing people based on money and stuff like that, I think you will always have, let's say, up to 
let's say up to 20% of the of the women who will work yeah they they just yeah. they just you know people are different like the average woman might be more comfortable not getting into that kind of uh requirement of having to you know go to work and follow this and rigid and this and that yeah but there will always be women who are like that that's you know that's what i think anyway and so though yeah. if those whatever it is i think it would be between 5 and 20% of of the women who it just suits them or it's just right for them to go down that path they would go down that path and they would marry men who have no issue with that and yeah. that would work out well you know uh, the, there would be many men who not really feel in that kind of woman but that's fine they don't have to marry that kind of woman and i think there will always be men who are fine with a with a woman who who is like that you know yeah. um even if you go somewhere like um saudi arabia where you know maybe one of the places where uh women are uh, up up until recently i mean now i think they are really getting more integrated into the workforce i think uh the average saudi man i don't know if he would have an issue with a woman his wife for example working in uh, a good you know female only environment or something like that i don't really think that's an issue um i don't think they would have an issue with that you know so that's why if we're talking about ideal muslim society like yeah like 5 to 20% like it just would suit them it just makes sense and then what the society would have to do is to just cater to that to make it a good you know halal good environment isn't it you know like yeah. uh, have segregation and obviously like literally anyway like the 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 kind of professions where uh women yani mostly most they need uh, female doctors the most like gynecology if you go to that kind of place in a hospital it's all women anyway right yeah so um so yeah I suppose... I, i'm not against like i i'm I, i'm not against women working in general i can't say that i can't say that yeah i think w w another thing that gets overhauled is the education system itself anyway mm -hmm. um because if we think back to our time at school how much time did we spend at school that actually we needed to be there to get the qualification and the mm. qualification itself is a is set at a particular standard that it might not necessarily need to be like the whole idea of you need to reach this certain level this arbitrary level that we've sort of set up um, mm. and you need to do this many hours at school and you need to study all of these things mm. to then be qualified when actually someone on the other side of the world, a completely different system, but is equally as qualified and could come over here and get a, the same sort of job. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm. Um, Although, so example, bro, that was... assumes that school is just for qualifications rather than learning itself. At this present time, I'd say it is because... Mm. But that's not how it should be in my opinion. That's not how it should... This is what I'm trying to say, yeah, that the whole status quo of what school is can be challenged. Mm. Um, for example... There's nothing stopping, and it sounds it doesn't it does sound a bit insane at the start, but there's nothing stopping someone that wanted to say hypothetically wanted to be a doctor or go into gynecology, whatever, mm. to start studying from home with someone with a group of other sisters that are in the same sort of um, same sort of interest, or establish somewhere that that establish a location that does that 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 facilitates for that. Because when we we are separating two things here, we're talking about jobs. Mm. which is i want to make i want to work for money mm. and then you've got service to the ummah which is these are positions that need to be filled by women and i want mm. to serve the ummah and mm. as an act of a better follow that through you know mm. um because is it first and foremost are 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 the, the women of this ummah chasing careers for a mm. reason mm. because okay this is this is what i would argue Allahu alam, Allah knows best. A man has a more of a drive to earn money mm. for the sake of his family and the ummah at large, mm. but immediately it's going to be to provide for his family, right? Mm. A, w a woman doesn't necessarily have that pressure. I wouldn't argue a woman would say... Yeah, a man, a man I, has to do that. He has no choice. Exactly. Yeah. So when a woman is saying, oh, I want to work, I want to chase my career, is that mm. for yourself or is that because I want to provide for my family? Like, Do they have the same... Mm. They haven't got the same obligation to be a breadwinner for the family. Yeah. Their money is theirs. So does that mean that all of that, generally speaking, is an isolated mm. interest where it's just for myself? You mm. know, because yeah, of course, I'm not saying women aren't going to spend on their families, but there's no uh, there's no obligation for them to. They're not expected to. So does that mean that women that are 
quote unquote hell bent on on following this whole idea of careers, mm. does that mean it's it's all for you? Mm. You know, mm. that puts things into question because, mm. yeah, there's going to be like we said, there's going to be uh, positions where. W- there's going to be a necessity for women to, to do those roles. But that necessity mm. itself is a need for the ummah and fulfilling that is an act of a bird. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's what motivates you. Yeah. That's a good question. Like, is this modern, um, you know, want of following career path and, you know, going up the ladder and this and that, is that natural or is it engineered? That's a good question mm. to like ask. And, I mean, I have no doubt it's, you know, I don't know, 80% engineered. Yeah. Um, and that's how, that's how things work. You know, people follow, you know, they follow certain things, like whatever yeah. it is, peer pressure, whatever it is, wherever it comes from, people, you know, follow, isn't it? So yeah, is it engineered or is it natural? I think a large amount of it is engineered. So that's why I'm, if I'm thinking about the ideal Muslim society where the correct things are engineered and the correct things are encouraged, then I, like I said, a certain amount of women would do that whole working thing uh, for, you know, voluntary or paid, yeah? And a large yeah. amount of women would be like, yeah, وَقَرْنَ fi بُيُوتِكُمْ, you know, بُيُوتِكُمْ. Mm. So, um, so, yeah, I think uh, that's that's the way to think about it. If we, if we think now about the ideal Muslim heart as opposed to the ideal Muslim society, so let's talk about what the ideal Muslim should be feeling mm. and what their interests are, mm. etc. First and foremost, the akhirah should be the utmost interest, right? So that's the first mm. thing. S- secondly, how important are aspects of the dunya to them? Because right now, if we think about careers, we mm. think about these driving factors, if we think about like even when, I don't know about yourself, but when I was, I don't know, 16, 17, what were the driving factors that were trying to push me to become career focused and stuff this mm. is before i had any interest in having a family etc it was dunya it was purely dunya it was purely uh you know being wealthy enough to attain mm. more of the dunya to buy you know have a nice car or have a nice house one day or whatever things like this it wasn't until the the responsibility of the family came along that all of that shifted and actually better man, better better life for my family was what was more important you know but separating all mm. these outlying factors that influence my desire for more dunya then actually the pure muslim heart purely wants to please allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know so if 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 people could if people mm. could first focus on becoming the ideal muslim and having the ideal muslim's interests as opposed to mm. the ideal muslim society which comes after that you know, isn't until the yeah. majority of the Muslims are rectifying what they want and their interests and their hearts that we can yeah. then talk about the idea of Muslim society. Then we can start yeah. talking about why people do things they do. You know, so like yeah. once again, you, you you you're chasing this career. Where where does it come into your akhirah? Like, what part of your akhirah does this career of yours apply? You yeah. know, yeah. and and then you start reflecting. You start reflecting on yourself yeah. um, because. Let's put it on paper. If I've got all my needs met, dunya wise, mm. which one could argue I do right now, you know, one could argue like right now as an individual, whether it's a man or a woman, I could have all my needs, and I specify needs like food, water, shelter, that sort of stuff. Mm. All of that is met. So the only thing that should be driving me to seek better in terms of wealth should be the akhira, should be oh, I can give more charity or I can get involved in more projects or I can go to yeah. Hajj and Umrah or, do you know what I mean it shouldn't yeah. be dunya 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 I want this bigger house or bigger car or yeah, do you yeah. understand what I'm trying to say yeah. um, although bro so, I think you're setting the the bar very high like oh yeah in even in the ideal Muslim society I wouldn't expect like everyone to have no interest in the dunya you know of course yeah. but what I'm trying to say is that yeah my 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 position is that it shouldn't get to a point where you're put sacri- sacrificing what's ideal in a muslim's life yeah. to attain more dunya yeah yeah so what i'm saying is like okay hypothetically speaking a man or woman are married yeah hmm. the man's working hmm. he's basically he's 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 got all the needs met hmm. you know and alhamdulillah worship allah both of them the whole family worship praise allah hmm. etc in their day to day and then 
they start wanting, I don't know, more holidays, or at least the woman of the house wants more holidays or more time away or a nicer car or something that isn't necessary, hmm. necessarily hmm. needed. Okay, hmm. but it's nice to have dunya wise. Yeah. yeah. So then the discussion arises that maybe she should work or get a part time job or something yeah. of that nature to fund that new want of theirs. Yeah. Okay. So the sacrifice is then made that actually, you know what, I'm going to work part time mm. so that we can start affording nicer things, etc. Yeah. This is what I'm trying to say. It yeah. Gets what's to a the point. what's the objective behind these decisions? Yeah. Yeah. Ex- exactly. Exactly. Whilst you know, one could argue that if you've got a, a different goal, which is like, although you're satisfying the needs of your family, you can't afford to go to Hajj, but you mm. really want to. And mm. the woman, and then you and your wife start thinking about your wife getting a part-time job so they can save for Hajj. Mm. Then one could step back and say, "Oh, maybe you know." Interesting. Whether, yeah, whether, yeah. You know, because right now I could say that I could say, you know, I haven't been to Hajj yet. I haven't been mm. to Hajj yet, and I'd love, I'd, I'd love to. And I do find it difficult to save for that. Um, yeah. And I could have that conversation with my wife. I could say to her, not that we've ever had it, but I could say, "Have you ever thought about working part-time?" Well, she could say the same to me. Mm. And then, if that was the end goal, we could be like, "Oh, maybe." you know yeah and it wouldn't have to be forever it could just be until we achieve that goal yeah you know yeah so these this is where your intention at the end has to sort of come into play a little bit mm. yeah but if it's purely dunya then it's it's a bit of a yeah it's just a bit of a waste mm. i guess and that that's when we're talking about like jobs right so yeah when we're talking about like um i guess what she's kind of asking is like okay okay mr amin or whatever like you're saying it's not ideal for women to work or for most women to work or whatever what would women be doing like you know yeah and she's saying you know how will women do these things like sister circles and stuff um so i so i already mentioned like five to twenty percent of the muslim women maybe it would be it would be right for them it would be appropriate for them um to actually have something which you would look see as a job which is where it's like there's a role responsibility very rigid maybe you're getting paid for it and therefore uh for me i feel that's quite a masculine thing it's like it's a masculine world if you like of you know clock in at this time clock out that time do as you're told be efficient you know i feel that's quite a masculine thing and some women you know women have some women have masculine traits and some men have feminine traits right so yeah five to twenty percent of the of the Muslim women, they would be suited for that and their husbands would be fine with that and they would find a way to, to make that work. And also part of the decision there would be what stage in the in her life is she in, you know? Is it before yeah. kids? Is it when her kids are older? All of that, right? But now for the rest of the women, right? The other 80 to 95%, yeah? I still think they should be active. Like, I still think there's no argument for sitting around the house or even sitting in the house cleaning and cooking in the house and and looking after the younger children who are not in school or whatever i still think there should be a higher standard where it's like okay i'm going to do that stuff of course but i am going to attend some kind of class i am going to read regularly i am going to um uh learn a certain important skill that i can you know use for the ummah whatever like I do think being active is important, and even if being active uh, like is outside of the house, you know. Um, so yeah, so in that case, uh, like sister circles, like yeah, or, or you know, it would be great if most women were involved in sister circles. Um, mm. Women teaching Islam or Quran or Arabic again, the same, I think, you know. Um, and I just think the the ideal Muslim world would cater and would give such importance to like raising children that it would allow these things to be done in a more flexible way, which mm. puts the priority at the family level, you know, rather than at the whatever the individual level or the economy level, you know. And so, for example, now, like if you want to be um, a teacher, they might be like, OK, there is five days a week or nothing. Yeah. But what if yeah. there was a, you know, what if there was a, a young mother, she wants to do that, but she's not comfortable giving five days a week to it. She's got kids, you know, what if we could make it flexible so she could do one day a week or two days a week? You know what I mean? So I think if we put priority on raising kids and giving kids the attention they need to grow up to be confident, able, 
um, Muslims, then we would cr be more flexible when it comes to uh, women being involved in these kind of things. Mm. So that's kind of what I think is ideal, that every Muslim woman would, would be active somehow. I mean, that that's what I, you know, we're very influenced by what we see, you know, and what we, you know, see our parents doing or whatever societies we come from. Like, we're very, you know, um, inv influenced. So what I see, for example, I think I'm quite influenced by Algerian society. And I see uh, Algerian society or a lot of, like, more traditional Arab societies, like, the women are active, but they're not doing this like nine to five thing. But they're active, yeah. you know. They're visit. They're regularly vis visiting each other for that for that social aspect. There, there are classes. There are. Uh, I don't know. Like my my aunt, she 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 wasn't able to learn uh, to read and write when she was younger. So now she's learning now. Like there's all these things are facilitated and stuff. And that's my vision anyway. That's my vision for like uh, Muslim society and uh, what what women should or could be doing. Who, I mean, in your experience, do you think who's the closest to sort of what we are envisioning in this modern day sort of <laughs> scenario? You know, I'm not saying that in yeah. terms of I'm not trying to get political, but I'm trying to see in yeah. terms of the modern day expectations and and mm. dunya elements that we have today. Who is closest to this sort of traditional? Because what, yeah. what the reason I ask is because in the question they've spoken about Aisha right mm. at that time period, but it's hard to, to to it's hard to envision that time period now with all the different expectations yeah, and yeah. things that are happening now. Mm. So I'm trying I, to think. I feel like I'm not aware of the details because I think you need detailed knowledge of the society. Yeah. And in a way, even Algeria, I don't feel I know the absolute details. Uh, because also Algeria between the rural and urban areas probably would be different. So yeah, it's and you'd it's be surprised, tricky, bro. Mm. Because even in rural, like even in rural Tunisia, mm. okay. Um, and I've said this before on many episodes, where who's working the fields, bro? Mm. <laughs> like it's the women, bro. It's mm. women are working the fields. Women are at That's the back of trucks. Wow. Women are at the back of trucks. Mm. Uh, men are driving the trucks. Don't get me wrong. Men will be driving the trucks. Men will probably be the the, the sort of head of this sort of organization, mm. and women will be back of the back of the trucks, covering their faces. A lot of them, like not in the carb or whatever, but you know, women that just wear headscarves and then when yeah, they're yeah. out, they kind of cover their face, sort of thing. Yeah, back of trucks early in the morning, just after Fajr, on the way to the fields. If you drive past fields, it's just women picking, picking, mm. picking out of the fields and stuff. I but wonder if normal. that's unique to Tunisia. I've seen, I'm sure I've seen it everywhere, but Allahu mm. Um And then you've got, you don't, I don't see, I, like I see men that work machinery in the fields, you know, like harvesting and stuff like that, tractors, that kind of okay. stuff. Um, but in terms of actually bending over and picking stuff, bro, mm. if there's any jobs that are, uh, you know, like ni early 1900 sort of, uh, industrial revolution sort of stuff with the yeah. uk that kind of stuff so any factory jobs mm. or anything where as mass it needs a lot of people to do it all at once it's generally women that do it mm. generally speaking um this is one of them uh, ones where it's like you need to like know history and you know you need to have an idea of for example what you're describing is that a modern thing was it always like that like yeah yeah it, and I, it'd be interesting to see if it was always like that i mean even like you got a lot of shepherds that are in Tunisia that are mm. men yeah but then sometimes you'll see women that are doing that role whether they're doing it for other people or doing it for themselves I don't know I think a lot mm. of female sh sheep herders or shepherds whatever you want to call them mm. they tend to be their own sort of sheep okay. but what I have noticed is they do business with each other so mm. for example you know Mrs mrs uh i don't know hakim mm. she's got she she's got a, bit, a bit of sh a few sheep right mm. but then she goes to mrs ahmed whose husband has sheep and she speaks to mrs ahmed and says oh can you do you want me to look after your sheep as well mm. and then they'll do business with each other in that sense mm. so the women will take care of the, each other's families things in that sense instead of men talking to women women talking to men etc mm. um the same goes for and I'm talking straight rural here because that's the experiences I've got. The same sort of thing when it comes to like selling livestock or selling 
eggs from chickens or stuff like that. Women tend to sort of do business with each other a lot. Mm. But that doesn't mean that women don't do business with men, you know. Mm. But what it does mean is that, at least where, I, where I'm from, there's always this hesitancy and you'd rather have a man speak for you because you feel like you're going to get played over. For example, like my aunt in Tunisia does a lot of, you know, looking after these kind of things that I've mentioned, right? Mm. But if there's a man come in to, to do business with, she would rather a man takes mm. speaks for her. Mm. Otherwise, she feels like she's going to get swindled or played about. Yeah, that makes know? sense, yeah. And, and that does make sense. That's a very interesting conversation. I don't think we can have it now, but and I don't think I'm even ready to share my opinions on that yet. But like the whole dynamics uh, when men and women work together. Um, yeah. Even I've heard stories like when it comes to women, like scholars, if you like, and men, uh, and how they interact, their dynamic is is very interesting. Yeah. Uh, but maybe that's for when I've develop the ideas more i've learned from my twitter days bro like when you have a half-baked idea like don't share it <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. so yeah yeah um so yeah we talked about a lot of things um i wanted to so like the whole thing of like Aisha, like um teaching so like again like i think that's good i think what i kind of see like ideally is women being able to focus on create on uh giving the kids the attention they need you know kids i think are getting neglected a lot when both parents are working so that's needed definitely i think um uh also women creating like networks between themselves where it's like because i don't know i i find like women kind of in my head like they need more social life than men yeah so right like and you can have a lot of productivity going on 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 the intersection basically of social life and trying to do service for others there's a lot that can go on there right so it's like i'm just thinking of like women getting together where they're meeting other women they're meeting friends but then also they are i don't know packing um clothes that people have donated to ship off to other you know poor poor people kind of thing like yeah i'm in I'm seeing that as very enriching for the women, like meeting other women, socializing, and then also uh, doing something good, you know, with maybe time that they, they're able to give that time for free because their husband's taking care of them financially. So mm. I don't know. This is kind of what I think is, is good, is a good direction. Um, maybe I would be proven wrong in terms of looking at the past, but maybe we don't need to always look at the past. Maybe we look at just what is the goal of Islam and what's the best for edger and what's the best for family um cohesion mm. and stuff like that i've um i was thinking in terms of women are probably thinking what our intentions are behind all of this because <laughs> you might get some women that are quite frustrated with what we're saying right hmm. um, i think it's important to put this into perspective uh now me and you we are we both have sons that are both hmm. have the same name funnily enough Sorry, man. But um, do you ever think about yourself as a father to daughters or a daughter? Like, yeah, do, a little bit. Does that play actually, in your mind? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think about it all the time. And Allah knows best. May Allah, you know, grant us with daughters. I, yeah, I don't yeah. have one, at and I hope two. I do have one. Yeah. <laughs> at least two, maybe three. Mm. I, I, you know, I've always envisioned myself having daughters, and I've always envisioned how I would be. And despite yeah. the fact that, you know, nothing will change the love I have for my son. I always have this feeling that the moment I have a daughter, the my perspective, and yeah. the way I care, and the way I think about my daughter will be completely different. I can't mm. help that. I feel that even now, and I'm I have a different type of protective jealousy over a daughter that I don't even have yet than I do for my son, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that's natural. Now, what I because we're having this conversation, I'm thinking about me and you, and how would we envision? their upbringing and their and on the expectations we have for them with mm. all of what we've said in mind yeah know? and what i would argue is that i mean you would want to work harder to be able to facilitate for your daughter's needs mm. and your daughter's education in terms of dini and, and her mm. spiritual upbringing up mm. until the point that she gets married mm. right and you wouldn't you probably wouldn't want her you wouldn't want her wouldn't want to see her struggling working or chasing this, this sort of dunya-based career Mm, correct. Um, 
because it would make you feel like less of a provider for her right and and I'd, I'd personally that's i'd feel the same i'd feel like why would i want to send my daughter out to work amongst yeah. men or in a difficult circumstance you know because at the end of the day rarely does anyone enjoy their work they just enjoy the paycheck at the end right if it was yeah, up to but... them they'd have the paycheck and not work yeah yeah you know that, like, and i say well, that up until that's now that's a good point like i think a lot of these a lot of the time when you hear people talk about chasing a career is often like young women yeah yeah by the time you're 30 you just hate your job <laughs> you know what <laughs> i mean so it's like uh you got to look at all the different opinions out there and different feelings people have towards their job because yes you know certain surveys or whatever found you know yeah 80 percent of people male or female hate their job but a man yeah. must do his job if you like of course so, and if you ask someone do you love your job enough to do it for free mm. then allah knows best what their reply would be mm. yeah. i wouldn't do my business for free i wouldn't <laughs> do it sure. i definitely wouldn't do mine for free bro yeah. <laughs> but it's a reality there's some people that say i love my job so ask them would you do it for free ask mm. a woman if a woman asks you about career chasing stuff ask her would you would mm. you do it for free mm. and if they say no then actually it's the money that you're after mm. you know that's which what's is more important. fair enough though which yeah. is fair but then if you say what if your husband could provide you with that money mm. instead then you'd say yeah. oh okay yeah <laughs> you know what i'm trying to say yeah. so would you want the time and the money or would you mm. just have well mm. you just do you understand you just have the money etc yeah. no time and then mm. this is it so mm. would I want my daughter what would I want for my daughter I would want my daughter to have all the time mm. and I'd want my daughter to have all the money mm. you know and, and, mm. and that's my daughter so for, you know that's, I'd also want that for my wife as well so that's why I'd say I'd want that for the rest of the Muslim sisters that are out there I'd want them to have mm. the money and the time and yeah. yeah fair enough we're putting pressure on men to step up but the reason why women are in the positions they are now is because men haven't stepped up. Mm, some, that's, yeah. You know, some in, in, in a lot of circumstances, whether yeah. that's fathers, whether that's, mm, or whether that's their husbands, mm. you know? Yeah. And that, yeah. That, that can be re- realistic because yeah. some women use that as an argument, you know? Yeah. Some women use that as an argument. And Alana's yeah. best. And there I are going to be some. I think I would, not, you know, like, for example, I, I agree with what you're saying in terms of, like, raising daughter, like, I would I would just fully provide for my daughter until um until yeah until she's married you know and I would uh if she wants to like study more or like I would push her in terms of at least gaining like the essential knowledge and if she finds passion in that then I would encourage her further and in terms of like memorizing Quran like that would be great um uh, but whereas whereas my son like i would be like age whatever 14 15 like you gotta go and work you know like yeah. you gotta like and the reason I, I want i would do that is is not so much like so he builds his cv or something it's to learn from a young age that this is you gotta toughen up a bit you're gonna go through difficulty but i don't really feel the need for my daughter to be tough you know what yeah. i mean yeah, I have that as well. Like, I think now, like, when my son falls over, hurts himself, whatever, I'm not, I don't know, my, my, the women in my family are quick to sort of comfort him, etc., this and that. And I never really have this strong, like, you know when you're playing rough with him or something like that, and you think, and everyone's like, oh, be careful, you're this and that, he's just eaten, he's, I don't really think like that. I'm like, well, it's not. It need, he needs to have this to toughen himself up. That's why he enjoys it so much. He likes all this sort of rough play and stuff. Yeah, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna hold him back from letting that out, mm. which is what can happen. But with a with a with a with a daughter, I feel like I would be a lot more protective with physical, you know, physical mm. play and stuff like yeah. this. You know, I don't think there's a problem with um, treating your daughter like a princess. I don't really see much downside. Not like you don't want to spoil her, but uh be treating her like like a princess i think that's fine like it there isn't really negative consequence to yeah. that i love alan but so far that's but what i think even so like there's certain values i know that i'm gonna instill into my son that i probably won't i'll probably instill different values to my my daughter like for mm. my son this this sort of um idea of work and earning things mm is what's really important to me because i feel like i didn't have a lot of that growing up so that i didn't value mm. the importance of work when i when it came to mm. it what's now like i want my son to do stuff before he gets what he wants you know mm. so if he wants something mm. 
whether it's even food or stuff, bro, like some sort of chocolate bar or whatever, then he has to do something to earn it. Whether that's tidying up his 50 room. 50 press-ups. <laughs> yeah, or something like that. But, you know, like when he's a bit older, there's going to be an expectation. And I said this to my wife, and she didn't. I don't think she agreed with me initially, but it's mm. just the position I'm going to put myself, put him in, is that if he is earning and he's got a job, then mm. th- I'm going to give him something that's his responsibility to pay for, mm. whether that's the electricity bill or the yeah. gas or... Do you understand? Mm. Like something because you're part of this house, yeah. you need yeah, to. Yeah, I would that. do that too. Yeah. Yeah, but I wouldn't expect that of my daughter at all. I don't. Yeah. Even if she, even hypothetically, if she had a job, hypothetically speaking, I wouldn't expect her to pay anything. But I definitely would for the van. Yeah. But then 100%. there's differences, isn't there? I wouldn't expect my daughter to be out mm. beyond a certain time. But I would. I wouldn't mind if my son was, as long as he's up to, you know, he's not up to no good. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Like, there's certain things, but. I think what we fall into is always, obviously always looking at the negatives. Oh, the boys get so much freedom, the girls don't. Oh, do you understand? Mm. Like these kind of things. When actually, maybe maybe that is the the case because men aren't fulfilling all the expectation that should be done. Yeah, like yeah, I just true. said, like my son, yeah, he should be paying for such and such. But mm. that was never the case for us. Yeah. We, we have an expectation to do that as boys when we grew up because although we had a, a lot more freedom than, you know, I had a lot more freedom than my sister's, there was no. The, my dad never had this expectation that you need to pay this and this and this. Yeah, but I, so, I, I argue but, that that should have been there. Yeah, to so maybe that, our right? like generation can balance things out again. In short, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's what the balance should be. Yeah, and um, uh, yeah. In the end, like if you if you're gonna tell him to like work from an early age and then when he works he contributes with that. In the end, there's a very good reason for that, and that's to train him. To, to, for an obligation that's coming up in his life yep you know it's like you know when you're when your child turns seven you start training them if you like to pray because when they're 10 they must pray yeah yeah definitely um and so it's like it's training you know like if your your daughter's not gonna have to as an obligation work so you don't need to train her to do that but you would have to train her to do other things that she's gonna have to do so yeah. So I mean, I yeah. remember there's like this element of pride when you used to speak about it when we were younger, like, oh yeah, I don't take money off my parents anymore. I pay mm. for this or I pay for that. You know, there is an element of pride there, mm. and I think that's natural and 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 sort of written into a man's code, you know, yeah. <laughs> to to have that, which is why we should um, we should sort of uh, nurture that at a young age. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. otherwise they just you know they 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 will grow selfish or grow not sort of. Ex- expecting this sort of responsibility mm. um and it and it won't keep them grounded because they'll have all this money and they can think they can do whatever they want with it which yeah. actually a woman was created more to do that like if she has money she can do what <laughs> yeah. she wants with it but man yeah, wasn't created yeah. for that you know and that's why maybe yeah. a man is gets more financially in certain situations in the dean because his responsibility mm. over others is greater than that of a female yeah of course and if you I was going to say, if you train him, like you're saying, to to like earn and then spend on his family from that young age, then he'll be the type of husband that is happy to do that, you know, when he gets married, isn't it? Definitely. Whereas, you know, versus the problem that you, you know, you mentioned earlier of some men not being so eager to do that role. Mm, and that's exactly. like maybe they weren't, they were raised to kind of just keep it for themselves and stuff. But you know every every kind of gender has its own role and it's like as a man you've got to um you've got to train yourself to be quite like generous you can't be stingy like mm. being stingy in general is bad but it's worse for a man because he's got to spend on his family isn't it so it's okay. worse when you're stingy that is and that's what leads to the biggest issue we have when it comes to marriage mm. when men are getting married for a reason for a selfish reason not realizing that they should be getting married to provide for this un- this upcoming family of theirs mm. you know yeah because if you're getting married purely like let's let's put let's be real about it you're you're getting married to a woman for your for on, in some cases for your own desire right mm-hmm. whilst you should be in the in the mindset that you're marrying this woman knowing full well and ready and willing to be spending on her mm. like to be providing for mm. her all her needs yeah, you know, and even to, to take actually, uh, pride in that, and take pride in that exactly. So you're marrying a responsibility, which is fine, which mm. is good. Mm. That's a good thing to have. While some some guys, we could argue, get married purely for the for the for the the, 
the pleasure and the elements that come with that not necessarily thinking about the responsibility because they think that it's a two two way street like oh i'm going to pay for things she's going to pay for things we're going to work together we're going to work mm. together the, the two people's understanding of working together isn't what 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 it should be mm. you know yeah for me it's that's, like you get that's not you get couples that talk about you get couples that talk about hustling together and making it big together and all this nonsense that I see all the time mm. and on the internet, you know, like, oh, we're going to grind together and we're going to get rich together and all this stuff. Mm. Like, okay, what does that mean, though? Does that mean that he's going to work, you know, work his butt off and you're going to take care of what's at home and he's going to spend and provide for you? Or does that mean we're both going to go out, we're both going to hustle, when we come home, mm. we're going to argue about who does the dishes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's actually a good way you meant, like, there are two ways to understand it, if you like. Um, oh, yeah. And I, I would say, I say this with full confidence, a man who's happy with that whole sharing thing, he's, in my opinion, he's not a real man. He's not masculine. Yeah. Mm. Um, but the other way you said it is interesting. It's like any success a man has in his, um, in his earning money, if you like, uh, with his wife supporting him in that, you know, in, in all the different ways women do support their husbands, that is like, you're contributing to each other, aren't you? It's not. Yeah. Oh, I did this on my own. It's everyone's helping each other, and ultimately, that's that's what we got to understand, Yanni. In these in these times where sometimes the lines are blurred between different roles, is that it's complementary roles, isn't it? You don't, Definitely. you know, even I, I sometimes bring like the business analogy, like McDonald's doesn't have, you know, twenty people flipping burgers. They have one person burgers, one person chips, one person this, one person. It's specialization. It's, it's normal. It's, it's, you know, it's more yeah. efficient, Yanni. Um, one thing that uh, the sister mentioned in the question, or yeah, she, she said, in my op- personal opinion, it would be a positive way to have financial stability, but also fulfill an Islamic duty. Yeah. She was talking about like Aisha teaching and stuff. Uh-huh. And I think she mentioned like it could be salaried or whatever in, in these days. Yeah. So I think this term financial stability is interesting because there has been, I've seen around Yanni language of kind of women urging each other to not depend on their husband financially. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes that's out of people's experiences, people's negative experiences of realizing that, oh, I thought I could depend on my husband and then he left me and I didn't have money and I also didn't have the skills to earn money, right? But that's, you know, we know that's going to be a small percentage. Um, what we do see a lot though, Yanni, disproportionately is like uh, only rely on yourself, which assumes you can't rely on your husband, which also mm. starts sowing the seeds of discontent and problems between the spouses, isn't it? When there's this constant narrative of don't trust your husband, don't, you can't trust him to provide. He might do this. He might do that. How is he, how are you going to have a good marriage when that's the narrative being spread? And then you might, if you, you know, you confront these people, they might say, oh yeah, no, your, your your husband's fine, but you just gotta, you know, you just gotta be sure like, oh, you just gotta like build uh, your CV or get a job or this or that or have savings in case. Uh. It's like, in case what? Like, what's your, you know, like, why did you marry him if you don't trust him? Yeah. So I think that's a big uh, issue, Lanny. Assuming this is, I don't know, I've seen it quite a lot. I've heard of it, this narrative, and it's very poisonous for the, you know, marital relationship. Definitely. And it, and it, it all comes back to, you know, this is a, a branch of a tree, this aspect that we're talking about, because the whole root of the tree has to be the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his worship because once yeah. you've established that and the two can establish that then hmm. everything else should be able to fall into place a lot easier you know yeah um but if hmm. you're missing that key element then there's going to be holes and gaps hmm. in your um in your dean and then there's going to be hmm. gaps in your in the way you treat each other and then the problems arise from those gaps because the only thing that's going to fill those gaps is is either sin or or discontent and, and these sort yeah. of elements that we're talking about, yeah, um, bro. Yeah, if you, so if you um, actually go on. Oh, nothing. I was I was just going to make a random comment about my audio because it's just the thing's gone low again. I don't know why. I need to sort this mm. out. But yeah, fix it in post. Fix I'm s- in I'm post. speaking as close as I can to the mic. Yeah, and it's but it, the it level adapts, isn't the same it? as. Yeah, I think it does, but I don't know how yeah, it knows that's that. that's the problem. Um, yeah, what I was going to say is, um, what do you think about 
what's the relationship between having a good marriage and the wife depending on her husband financially? Uh, if you like, it's it's a it's quite a big big thing, right? Could be controversial. So if you don't have an opinion, so then that's fine. I think but... the, the the opinion is what I sort of touched on just now was that what you said about women having to be safe and and secure their own safety by doing this and saving for themselves and and working mm. etc so that just in case the man does i don't know betray them or whatever then mm. then they're sort of looked after but this was why it goes back down to the man and the woman both being able to fear Allah initially so you have to find someone that fears Allah way before they get you or marry you or whatever mm. so that is quite well established um okay. and that everything that they do is with with Allah's sort of um you know legislation in mind hmm. in terms of what the deen permits in mind so that, that you can't argue with it there's nothing to argue with uh so every decision you make you you try and make it based on what's best in terms of your deen and that way you can't then say that this person is going to harm you or you're going to get betrayed or whatever and then everything they do if you if you if you sort of um worship allah and you trust in allah and trust in allah's deen which we all do and we all should do fully then nothing they do can harm you in that sense because they're after the same thing so actually you can then relinquish a bit of that fear and a bit of that sort of um distrust because the person you've married is a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. and they, they, their goals and their aspirations are in line with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for your family mm. as opposed to I think what ends up happening is that a lot of a lot of issues that arise are because this this uh, lack of following the deen comes into play whether it's sins that come into play whether it's issues of mistrust that come into play otherwise what have you got to be scared of understand if you all want the same thing it's mm. all about being on the same page and if that page that you're on is the deen and the legislation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which can't be argued with mm. then you've got nothing to worry about but mm. if you go down to other situations with other couples where it's they they're not basing what they want and their desires and their goals and aspirations on the legislation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then there's a lot of room for there's infinite room for conflicting views infinite room for different goals different paths different clashes you know for sins sins that disrupt the marriage sins mm -hmm. that break the marriage reasons for the woman to 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 want to to have her own so that she doesn't have to rely on anybody because she can't trust this man same with the man reasons for him to want to not share or provide for his wife because he can't trust his wife to do certain things or to respect him or to do you understand what i'm trying to say yes yeah it's all about this it's it all comes down to this 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 worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's what comes first for everybody because when that mm. is reasonably sound then everything else could fall into place and nothing is too major because really and truthfully you're all on the same page wanting the same thing you want mm -hmm. you know there's only there's this you know there's sirat al mustaqim and then there's other other paths and all you're mm. both trying to do is find that path to the to, to al akhirah and that path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so generally mm. speaking the good things tend to be clear what's best for the family what's best for the deen tend to be clear because what could happen is you could have a dunyawi uh disagreement mm. right you could have a disagreement that's purely dunya based but what what ends up happening is that what does the deen legislate it, it legislates that the man's going to make that final decision so the woman can has to subside to that decision at the end because that is that's what the deen legislates is for the man is going to make that final decision in terms of what's best mm. for the family mm. but if you have a clear thing which is a clear deen uh you know what's, what allah wants for you then naturally you're both going to agree on that because that's what the deen kind yeah. of wants for you do you understand yeah so it's like yeah it's like building a marriage on the same foundation which exactly. is the pleasure always, of allah and the biggest issues i've ever seen in every marriage i've i've seen break down or have issues or whatever is that the deen is only important to one party right in this issue in this particular issue whatever right. the issue is you know so it could be let's 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 go hypothetical it could be the raising of the kids okay mm -hmm. um i want my kids to do this this and this and this 
but they're busy mm. doing this like Dean and, and they're more important, interested in that and then that, there's an issue that arises and a, and discord within the family uh, within the man and the woman right mm. well that's because you you haven't prioritised what the Dean wants if the kids are, are more if the kids are following Dean more less than Dunya why should that be an issue right mm. and then you could have another situation where it comes to like infidelity and stuff like that okay mm. so let's say the man is being you know uh, unfaithful to his, his wife or well, they're clear cut we've got issues of dean there do you understand yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. so that is a facilitate so the so the woman feels like she can't she can't trust her husband he's committed sin that sin affects the rest of the family it can be anything yeah. it could be any sin that the man does or the woman does then that sows the seed of discord because it's not following the legislation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Mm. You understand? A lot of these issues come from either the, the the husband or the wife taking a path that is is away from what the deen, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislates. Always. Mm. It always tends to be that way. But if you've mm. got the man and woman both understanding, the same understanding of what the deen is, same understanding of what's ex- what Allah expects of us, then the things that you're going to disagree on are going to be dunyawi matters that, all in, that generally speaking, because of the deen that supersedes things, mm. it generally falls back to the man making that final decision as long as mm. it's within the confines of the dean do you understand what mm. i'm trying to say here i do no. yeah yeah i'm just trying to play devil's advocate but i can't <laughs> it's difficult to because I'm the struggling. only way you can play the only way you can play devil's advocate is if one person makes a decision that goes against the dean well i don't know if it's that clear cut for example yeah i don't want my son to touch a phone until he's 15 yeah yeah what if my wife disagrees with that? So here we go. So this is what my example was. So that's a, mm. let's say that's, although you could bring Dean into it, let's say that's a dunya, uh, dunya disagreement, right? Okay. The dunya disagreement is always superseded by the fact that in our tradition, in Islam, the man makes the final mm. decision for the family. What's the that family, based on? I'm saying tradition. I can't really say what that exactly is. But what mm. I would argue is that, in terms of, in terms of who is the leader of the household, I'd say the man is. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there so is. It, I mean, there is. Uh, there is any yeah, proofs for that, of course. Like the. This is what. The, uh, I, can't, I know there's proofs this, for it. Uh, I'm just saying yeah. I can't quote you anything directly yeah, yeah, right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, you know. I think uh, maybe, maybe it's it's about time like people actually hear some of these proofs because, a lot of the time it's vague and then that leaves room for doubt among certain yeah. people who have been imagine they've been fed all this feminist propaganda but they've never been heard, like heard any proof like from Islam and so yeah. for them it becomes very clear like okay I'll go down the feminist route you know so yeah. you know like what, what, yeah. what we're saying is that in mm. that scenario we're not mm. saying that the man doesn't have to listen to the woman whatsoever he could agree yeah you know he could take that advice and be like okay fine yeah, but I'm saying that situation isn't a marriage-breaking situation, as opposed to other disagreements. That's true. Where there's, yeah, that's do you understand? True. That is that's yeah. just a disagreement that's going to happen naturally in marriage. As yeah. long as your disagreements mm. are dunya-based, mm. right, and they don't encroach upon the dean of 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 your yourself and your spouse and the p- different paths you want to take and the end goal for the family, then we've got an issue. Yeah, you know. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. Actually, now I'm thinking about another hypothetical situation. I think it does make sense. Like for example, you know, um, Abdullah's wife wants to um, work. Um, let's say she doesn't. She wants to work in like a uh, as a nurse in a you know in a female only kind of department of the hospital. Uh-huh. Yeah, and he's just not really comfortable with it. Yeah. As long as he's got like a, I guess a benefit-based uh, reason for that, then you know she should listen to him on that. But that also requires that he kind of thinks of her, thinks of what maybe she's. I think personally, Annie. I think uh, as a man, Annie, because you've got that that authority, it's kind of your responsibility to think uh, deeply about certain things. So, for example, mm. your wife keeps saying, "I want to, I want to work, I want to work, I want to work." It's your job to think deeper and say, okay, does she really want to work or is she just, for example, lonely, right? Yeah. And you'd be like, okay, maybe she wants to work because she wants, she'll mix with people. So why don't, instead of her getting a job, let me take her to XYZ place once a week where she can meet people, you know? Yeah. And that's what I think that's like, like from the hadith, for example, the Prophet said, 
Like this is being a, for me, I think it's being a true shepherd, a, a true leader is going beyond the surface level of what uh, people are saying and try to understand and empathize with what they actually want and then trying to bring a solution that everyone's happy with. And it's like what you're saying. If if your leadership and your using your authority is based on pleasing Allah, then it, it, I guess it would work out, inshallah. This is it. And once again, like you said, in that situation, like is it the money that's the issue? Is it because we're not earning enough that actually that's why she wants to work in a particular field or she wants to work mm. at all? Okay, and let me think about you know finances and let's think about bettering this situation. I mean, at the end of the day, my advice to men is that if you're taking on a family, then your own selfish interests, I'm not saying selfish in a negative, but like the, the, mm. you're thinking about personal. yourself, yeah. your personal interests and stuff, that should be the last thing you think about, generally mm. speaking, because... I'm trying to put it into my life like what do, how how many times a day do the the needs of my family supersede mine mm. and it's I'd like that to be all the time because that that keeps me busy and and keeps away the ego that I've tried so hard to put away mm. you know yeah because like a man's ego servant leader kind of concept exactly a man's ego it's like the king okay the king wants the, the the society's best interests at heart right mm. but if the king is lavishly spending on himself and has got this and that and this and there's no public works projects and nothing going on then actually this king is just lavishing in his own leadership mm. right yeah. but as in but put that instead of a leader and you know we hear about leaders that are whether they're fact or fiction you know these sort of mythical le leaders of of these great stories where it's like oh he gave all his wealth away and he he was on the front lines of every battle and it was do you understand like he puts him he puts his his people and those that he's responsible for first way before himself mm. you know that's what people that's what people sort of uh admire and yeah that's what a heroic and that's our is. that's our model yani as muslims our model is not i don't know why it just popped into my head like churchill was not in the trenches right the prophet was on the front line you know Sayyidina Umar was on the front line. So our model for for leadership is quite clear. It's quite amazing. And uh, it requires a lot of proactivity, a lot of really being with the people, yeah. understanding their issues and stuff. I know, at, at the most basic level, at the most mm. basic level, if you were to see a man who has a family, right? Man, wife and kids, okay? That man, and, and let's say you saw that man and he's dressed up to the nines, right? And he looks sharp. Mm. And he looks, you understand, and he's got a flash car that isn't a family car, right? Yeah. And then, you know, you were, you happen to see his wife and kids, and they're just not, mm. you know, not not at that level, not dressed the same way, not looking the same way, not fed the same yeah. way. Then you, you, straight away, you're gonna have questions in your head. <laughs> this that guy's make any a flop. Sense. <laughs> this guy's a flop. But then, <laughs> yeah. if you see a man that actually he's working, he's working his butt off. He's got this family car that isn't any way attractive but it does what it needs to do yeah you understand and he's always buying gifts for his family he's always, always you know but you know taking them out to eat or whatever it is but mm. rarely do you ever see him in any new clothes or whatever then you have a bit more admiration because he's doing his job yeah he's doing what he's required for him and, and that's the, you know mm. personally that's who i want to be mm. and the moment that i see the moment i detect any element of like ego in myself i try and quell it straight away like the moment i realize that you know Okay, I have this. Like before, just now, I had this sort of. I wanted to go and get a haircut, didn't I? Mm, yeah. Uh, and um, you know, sometimes I think about getting new clothes and stuff like that. But then I, I think about okay, what does my family need first? Like mm. today, there were so many things that my family needed that actually, that getting a haircut isn't going to be that practical. Let me throw that to the side. But mm. any other man could have said, everything else can wait. I need to go and get my haircut. Yeah. <laughs> so this is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. These little things that I'm not trying to say that I'm an ideal man. I'm not trying to say that, but what I'm trying to say is that there are men that would that would prioritize themselves before they yeah. would whatever their family needs. Mm. It's not until everything is A-OK -okay and nobody needs me that I could maybe justify doing something for myself, mm. you know? Yeah. But even then, there's an element of should I, should I not, can I, can I not kind of thing. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's what keeps you in check because the moment that you start thinking about yourself more, you've lost your purpose your responsibility, what you're meant to be doing, that's what can drive a rift. Yeah. You know? 100%, bro. Uh, honestly, you said it really well, man. Uh, another example I, I just remembered 
was uh, Imam Dawood Walid. I just first time I heard this guy who's on a podcast. He's talking about masculinity and um, he was saying, you know, we've got a, I can't remember what one of the cars. And he said, we've also got a BM. He's like, you know, which car do you think my wife drives? It's the BM. You know, how can I be yeah. driving the, the BM? And, and she's got to drive the, the other one. So it's like, uh, I'm so, I'm so excited and passionate about this topic, bro. Like, <laughs> I, I, like literally, bro, have you ever heard anyone talk about this stuff? Like, this is maybe one of the reasons why certain, literally, bro, there are, there are, there are grown men out there who think doing the opposite of what we're talking about is absolutely fine and absolutely masculine. And it's just crazy, man. I think in the Muslim scene, I think the people we listen to have such a, such a, large following that if they do delve into it they get flamed like they get absolute you know it becomes very controversial for them i think we've got the luxury of not having that audience so we can just say what we feel <laughs> well know? inshallah i never get into that situation man because in the end it's a sin to hide knowledge it, yeah it doesn't matter for for anyone because if you're married and you're you and your spouse and me and my spouse are on the same wavelength then it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks because it's working for us and that's fine you know yeah and we like we truly believe this is going to help everyone yeah exactly like i didn't i talked uh, i i need to make a clear distinction i talked uh, maybe last episode more about what my ideals are but in this episode i've talked about how in general the ideal is that uh for example i said i in the even in the ideal society you would have that 10 to 5 to 20 percent who are just it's appropriate it just suits them to work even though yeah. that's not for me right like maybe i'm not comfortable at least at this stage with that but you know what i mean like there's a differentiation between what we think is ideal for us and then in general what is beneficial for society and yeah you know, i would say no doubt like that the, what we're talking about here is also beneficial for non-muslim societies like this is just part of the rules of human existence if you like so so oh it's so, a bit longer than i thought it was going to be <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I, I have to i have to get going now inshallah yes yes uh it's been great though man i think uh i think initially we were stumbling on trying to express what we meant exactly but hopefully uh we made it clear and um you know it's always hard to distill your thoughts into like a one hour podcast and yeah. I just uh, I think that it's not in one episode you're going to find our opinions on on something it's over listening to many episodes that you're going to piece together things and ultimately you know nobody is taking us as authorities but the fact that you've heard the opinion then you can kind of uh, decide on it yourself and then you know maybe you've, maybe in the process of thinking about our opinions you you email us you challenge us you add to our opinions and that that would be good, man. I think it's very useful, very important for this kind of thing to happen, regardless yeah. of if it's us to do, us doing it or not. So yeah, anything else to add, bro? Uh, no. If you have any sort of um, input that you want to um, give us, just like this listener did, you can uh, go to mindhighestpodcast dot com, and I think all the links to contact us are there. Um, there's you know there's a there's anonymous curious cat stuff that you can send your questions in if you don't want to be identified not that it really matters because we don't really know who's t sending us stuff anyway mm -hmm. um yeah episode 60 trying to be more consistent i think we're doing well mm -hmm. um if you do enjoy the podcast and there's particular episodes that you feel like you benefit from or you you found very thought provoking then share it with those that think you think will benefit as well I, I sometimes i search mind heist into twitter and i see people talking about mind heist without us mm. sort of being aware of it which is mm. quite cool to see uh people sharing it in their top five or top ten lists of podcasts and stuff which is awesome because i don't really we do this and i don't really think we at least i don't really think too much about the numbers and the audience and all of that i just i like just the discussion and the talks we have but I, I do forget that people are actually waiting every week for a new episode and stuff, which is really cool. So, yeah. Mm. But yeah, thank everyone. Thank you everyone for listening. Uh, and, uh, yeah. And and if you if you enjoyed uh, this episode and you know maybe you want to listen to another before next week, then don't forget we have fifty nine other episodes. So maybe you want to go back and and check those out as well. Yeah, definitely. 
yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah, very good. Jazakum Allah khairan, everyone, for listening. And thanks to uh, Sumaya for sending in this uh, comment or this question. And uh, thanks for, for the dua you made for our families and everything. And yeah, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Shadwana illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.